how's it going? I'm Sal. Thanks for checking out the video. Um, today we're going to be diagnosing the screech that's happening on this uh, front passenger tire on my Tundra. So um, I noticed it when I was driving around with the windows down. I could start to hear the screech like bouncing off of anything that I drive by. I'll insert some clips here. It was really noticeable and it was getting to the point where I was, you know, kind of self-conscious about what's what's going on in here. It's just super loud. So I have the truck lifted up, obviously, and uh, you can hear it. It's really loud. I'm trying to, I can't really figure out where the sound's coming from, but you can see it, it doesn't really want to spin. Um, originally I was thinking it was the axle. Uh, I'll get under and show you in a second. Um, the axle, both boots are torn and there's barely any grease in there. So I'm going to replace that anyways, but now that I can get under here and listen to it, I'm kind of thinking it might be the, um, the rotor, something going on with the rotor. It might be dragging. I'm not really sure. Um, but I'm going to get the wheel off and try and, um, see what's going on in there. Okay. So we're up under the truck. Um, this is the axle and the CV joint um, that goes into this front differential. So you can see that the boot itself has seen much better days. There's grease all over the subframe. And I was hoping that this would be where the sound is coming from, but it's not. The sound is coming from over here. So this axle, or this boot, um, is also torn. You can see it up here. Uh, I think it's just completely at, like has no grease in it, but it really sounds like the sound is coming from over here So like I said, I'm planning to do the axle anyways because um, it's obviously in really rough shape, but Looks like we might be dealing with some brake thing going on over here Okay, so got the wheel off, and I can't even spin this freaking rotor in the caliper. So it's leading me to think it's more of a brake thing than an axle thing. Um, so I even tried sticking a screwdriver in the slots and trying to, in the veins and trying to spin it. it it's not budging. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, take off the caliper it's not required for doing an axle change, but I'm trying to diagnose this, so um, I'm gonna try and do that as well. Taking off the caliper are just these two 17 millimeter bolts on the back side. It should pop right off. Okay, so this is escalating quickly, <laughs> as you'd probably expect. The noise, there's no noise now that uh, the caliper's off. So, I don't know. I mean, the pads are super worn down. You can see, especially this left pad, it's super worn. And something I noticed is that there's not the retainer things, like the springs that go in these holes and hold them out. So I'm kind of wondering if it's just as simple as that, that they were dragging because there was no outward tension preventing them from, or, you know, holding them off the rotor. So that would be a really stupid, simple fix. Um, I don't know if that's actually it, but yeah. So this axle job is turning into a brake job as well. I've thought about doing new rotors. There's a tiny bit of a lip on them, but I, I don't know. I think I'm gonna 
leave these and just do new um, new pads. Because rotors are like 100 bucks each. And if I'm gonna do that, I wanna do both sides. And I'm not ready to drop another 200 bucks on rotors for the truck. Okay, I really gotta start being better about just time-lapsing everything because I just, I'm like, oh, I'll just do this one thing and then I get carried away and before you know it, I'm ready to take these, um, <laughs> the pads out and I didn't record any of it. So the way it works is these pins slide through um, the bottom and tops and they're retained with these little um, like retaining springs at the other end. Um, so you just pop those out with some needle-nose pliers pull the, um, the pins through, and then now the pads are ready to come out. So I'm gonna time-lapse getting these out and then making sure I bought the right ones from the auto parts store. <laughs> okay, so when I went to um, uh, O'Reilly's and went to go pick these up, they said that <laughs> they're two different sizes. So I was like, oh crap, I don't know what size I need. But these bigger ones, um looked like the right size so i picked them up and um, it looks like all the everything should line right up so i don't know what's up with like this on the sides um but i'm just gonna try and get them in there and and see if it all lines up uh, hopefully it does Okay, so I realized I should probably update the video. It's been a little bit, learned a little bit. <laughs> so, it is not the axle that's causing the, the sound. It's the, one of the pistons in the brake caliper is uh, locked out. So the brake caliper, or the pad itself was just dragging on the rotor. I bought, I just went to um, the auto parts store, I bought a new caliper, and I also went to Harbor Freight and bought a C-clamp. I'm hoping that I can just close the um, that one piston and break it free, and hopefully it's, it's back to normal afterwards. Um, but if I can't get it to budge, then I have a new caliper and I can install it and bleed the brakes and all that stuff. So, so I backed the truck up so I can get the Nissan out and then I drove back forward um, just without any pads up here. Um, so it was really a little sketchy. The brake just goes to the floor a little bit, <laughs> but it still worked. It still broke on the other on the other wheels. So I'm gonna take this off and then uh, hopefully the C-clamp works. Well, I almost did it again where I forgot to uh, record what I'm doing here, but. So I have this five inch um, C-clamp here and I'm just gonna try and fit it over this bottom piston and get it to budge. It's locked in there pretty good. I don't know, this is just a Harbor Freight one, but it was starting to just walk around on me This at this end over here. So I didn't feel comfortable going any tighter, but it's not, it's not really moving at all. Yeah, this thing's not moving. Okay, so this is just a 10 millimeter. Um, I like using a line wrench. Uh, I think these are pretty easy to strip out. So, and disconnect the brake line.
and uh, out with the old and in with the new. Um, I mean, it comes with the whole caliper as well as new pins and little card pin stoppers and all that stuff. So, I mean, these old pins are pretty crusty. They didn't slide very well. Um, so I think new pins. I also bought this uh, brake lubricant to put on the pins and the pads and stuff. Um, I think it's gonna make a big difference. Okay, now that we dealt with the caliper, um, the wheel turns now, <laughs> uh, I'm going to do the axle. I still have the part, even though it wasn't what was wrong. Uh, while I'm in there, I should probably, while I'm in here, I should probably do it. Okay, so I just, broke my screwdriver trying to get this thing off. Uh, everything I was seeing online was just kind of you wedge a screwdriver in there, whap it a bunch of times, and eventually it comes off. So, I'll be honest, if this solved the squealing problem, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about calling it here. I still have the axle, I can put it in at another time, but I'm kind of thinking for today, I might, I might just call it. Uh, I'm gonna bleed the brakes, take it for a little drive, and we'll, we'll see how I'm feeling after that. Okay, so I just filled up the brake fluid all the way over there, and then I just rigged up this little thing so I can bleed it by myself. I just have this, uh, I figure it is, 3 eighths, whatever tube, gas line. And then I just uh, drilled a hole in um, the cap of the brake fluid. I've already used this on my Nissan, um, so I figured after this, it's probably on its way out anyways. Plus, brake fluid's like five, ten bucks. So, um, my thought process is <sighs> the tube is submerged at the bottom, so when I bleed the brakes, um, all the air that will go out into the fluid, and then it won't be able to suck any air back in uh, afterwards. So, I'm going to go... Um, pump the brakes a few times, and hopefully this works like I'm expecting. Okay, 
So I decided now that I'm done working with brake fluid and brake dust and nasty brake stuff, now I'll put on my gloves. And then um, I'm gonna, I think the brakes are blood. I I think I'm, I, I did them a bunch of times and by the end of the clips, there was no more bubbles coming out. So uh, I don't know, I, I, think, I think it's good. I'm gonna take it for a test drive around the neighborhood, make sure it's good, um, but for now, I'm gonna throw the wheel back on. I'm not gonna do the axle tonight. Um, it's getting late. I wasn't planning on doing this all day. I expected I would be, but I still didn't really want to be. <laughs> so I'm just gonna get the wheel on and then um, take it for a quick test drive. Okay, so I just drove it up and down the street. Uh, it feels good. It doesn't feel like there's any air in the lines or anything. Um, but when you slam on the brakes, now it pulls to the right because those pads are much newer than these. Um, and I haven't seen these ever or in a while, so I don't know what these look like. So as much as I want to just go inside, uh, I'm gonna replace these brake pads too. This caliper should be good, um, but so it should be, should be a really easy thing just swapping out the two brake pads. I know how to do it now. Um, it should only take a matter of minutes. Um, but let's get this tire off. I'm just going to time lapse most of this because um, I just showed you on the other side. But I'm going to do this side too and hopefully we'll brake straight. Okay, so it's uh, clearly getting dark now, but uh, I just did the driver's side as well. So all new brake pads up front for this truck. I got quite the mess to clean up, but um, before I do this, I really wanna go um, bed the brakes. So I've got a great uh, strip of road right outside of my neighborhood, and I'm just gonna go, um, you know, get to 55, get down, slam on the brakes, get below five, get back up to 55, slam on the brakes, um, just to help the pad, um, you know, get bedded to the rotor. So I'm going to go do that now. I'll bring you guys along because why not? And then uh, after that, I'll close out the video. Okay, so I'm just on my way home from AutoZone. Um, did the brake bedding procedure like you saw earlier, and then <clears throat> just dropped off the core. I uh, got my refund. And so I, I don't know if it's just in my head or if it's, I feel like it very well could be a real thing because <laughs> um, the brake was the brakes were dragging, but I feel like the truck does coast better. Um, I'm anxious to uh, track my fuel economy over the next couple fill ups. I calculate it every time I fill up. The truck doesn't do it for you, so I uh, I do the quick math every time I, <laughs> I get gas. But right now I'm getting like 14 and a half, sometimes 15 if I'm like you know, being really light on the gas. But I'm anxious to see if it goes up now that I fix this brake problem. But other than that, the brakes themselves feel good. It doesn't feel like there's any air in the lines. Um, it stops hard. Uh, I 
feels basically what like it did before uh, without the squeal. So, um, yeah, with that, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. This wasn't supposed to be a very instructional video, just kind of me taking you along while I diagnosed where the squeal was coming from and kind of fixing it throughout the day. But uh, if nothing else, hope you uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks so much for watching. Have a great rest of your night.